It's 7 o'clock on Saturday, which means it's time for a YouTube live video. Just just in the camera there. Nothing to see. Do not touch your, tele your television screen. You cannot change the settings. I have control. All right. So I have got a fun fold for you today that um, is a cottage garden in paper. That's what I'm calling it. That's what I'm calling it is a cottage garden in paper. Now I saw this fold. I really don't know what it's called. Hey, Rosie. I really don't know what it's called, but I saw um, a an example of this done by a demonstrator. Her name is Susan Lavassier, Lava, Levasseur. I'm not real sure. Susan, if you ever hear this, I'm sorry if I have butchered your name. My apologies. Um, so I started the card. She had all of the de all of the card cuts, and in my haste to make the card. I got it done and it was a five by seven, which doesn't really work for me. Hey guys, hi Mary and Patricia and Marva and Ginny and Faith and Karen and Debbie and Marsha and Mary. Whew, uh, there you go. It's all right, eventually you'll figure it out. It's it's YouTube now on Saturday night. Thank you, Mary, I appreciate you coming. Um, so I did a little engineering on it with my, you know, the old printer paper. And I was like, oh, how cool. And so I built another one out of my <laughs> Blushing Bride cardstock and realized I had created a four and a quarter by four and a quarter card. So <laughs> go number three worked out. So now I have directions for you here to make this fun fold that folds out like so. You can see how it looks when you get it there. And when you fold it up, it will fit in a regular A2 size envelope. So it becomes four and a quarter by five and a half, which is, in Mary's world, normal. And it uses the very, very beautiful Dahlia Days bundle from the mini catalog. Now, I'm going to tell you, I did not see this in the new annual catalog, which tells me that this is a limited time now. It's... I don't know if they'll get it back if it runs out. So if you love this, and you should because it's gorgeous and it stamps beautifully. I mean, look at those dahlias, serious. If you like it, I'd just go ahead and get it now and uh, and be good to go. And then I use the scalloped contours, which unless I'm very much mistaken, is in the new catalog. So this very awesome set. If you didn't even like the flowers, the, the rectangles are perfect. Um, so scalloped contours and Dahlia Days is what we've used here. So we'll go ahead and get started. You should be fine if you don't take notes because with any luck, I'll have directions on my blog tomorrow. I'm not, I'm kidding. Of course I'll have directions on my blog tomorrow. And with any luck, they'll actually be correct. I'm just gonna do a little quick check here. Yeah, oopsie. That, oh yes. You see, I'm already, I've got my brain backwards. So this starts with a five and a half by eight and a half inch piece of cardstock. In this case, it is Blushing Bride. And to begin with, you're gonna put the long side at the top. And I like to use the uh, scoreboard for this because I don't have to put my little arm out. Thanks, Terry. Hey, Karen, appreciate you. Um, and so what you're going to do is with the long end at the top, the long side at the top, you're going to score at two and one eighth, four and one quarter, and six and three eighths, like a two. And then you can put this away and bring out your trimmer. So can you all see these score lines? Can you see them good enough to be able to see what I'm doing here? All right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my rubber eraser and get that. I don't know what that is, but it looks like some kind of spurious adhesive, and I'm going to get it off before it spuriously adhesives to my cardstock, because that would be not good. I don't need, nobody needs adhesive where they don't want it on their cardstock, so hopefully that will work out. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the short end at the top, and I am going to cut from this score line to this score line. Okay, so from the first score line to the third score line, I'm going to cut at one and a half inches in from both directions. Okay, easy and peasy. Doesn't even take any math. So we're just going to put the edge at one and a half inches. We're going to roll our trimmer tool up to the top. It's the dark gray one, if you're following along. I'm going to pull this to me just a little bit. I'm going to use this line right here and line up with the score line, okay? Just like that. And then I'll push it in and pull it down until that little mark reaches 
the second, the third score line, okay? So I've gone from here to here. Now I'm just gonna pick it up and you can see what I've done there. So I'm gonna flip it around, put the top again at one and a half inches put the left side at one and a half inches, bring my score tool up, and go to that first score line again, push the tool in, and bring it down until the little guide mark on the blade is at the second score line. And that's about the extent of it. And here is where you will discover if it's time for a new trimmer blade, which mine kind of is, and I've searched everywhere and I don't, of course, have any. So I've got a little bit of a rough edge. Let me show you how to fix that because all is not lost. All is not lost. Uh, do not need to abandon ship. Hey, Lenny, appreciate you joining. Hi, from snowy Wisconsin. I know, <laughs> I'll bet you do. Okay, so I'm going to just um, give this a little brush because it got kind of Got a little raggedy looking. Like I said, I apparently need a new cutting blade and didn't realize I didn't have any. So I'm just gonna take my little sander. If y'all don't have a sander, just get one. They're just not that expensive. And you don't know when you might just need it to save your card, okay? There we go. All right, now, in order to create this fold, we need to do some valleys and some mountains. And the trick here is we're going to do a valley and then we're gonna push the center up into a mountain at the same time we push the card together like that. Okay, so you can see it goes from flat to folded up with valley, valley, mountain. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm, I'm certain it does because you're all like, oh, come on, Mary, that's just easy. And then we'll just go ahead and burnish our folds. A little bit, a little bit of burnishing between friends is always a good thing. All right, so there we go. Now there is our card base, easy and peasy. And now all we're gonna do is decorate. So what I did discover is it's really a lot easier to put these panels on way before you put the card front on. So that's what we're gonna do first. I have matted everything in black on this because I really like pink and black. And then when we've added the purple, the hand pen DSP, you know this is going away, right? It is so going away, it's retiring soon. You absolutely want to get it because it's amazing. Hey, Kathy, did you have fun at On Tour? I hope you did. We really saw some cool um, samples for, with the new products. Y'all, we have new masking paper, which is kind of cool. You know how we use sticky notes? Well, now you're gonna be able to use masking paper that works in exactly the same way, only it's bigger and it's all sticky. So it'll be really helpful for masking off parts of your sentiments, masking parts of images. Um, you can cut it out and use it. They've made a sample where they cut a something from the Beautiful Shapes die. They cut a hexagon, I guess it was, and put it on a piece of cardstock and then spritzed color around it. And when they picked it up, oh dear, that didn't work out at all well. That is the wrong piece. I did some bad cutting here, people. Apparently I've done some bad cutting. Hang on a second, let me get rid of this. See, that'll learn me, won't it? One second, it's all going good, and the next, you've borked it up. Okay, so that was supposed to be, that was supposed to be, let's pretend I did that on purpose, shall we? Let's do that. All right, so this is a one and a quarter by one and seven eighths. Therefore, I need a one and an eighth by one and three quarters piece of this DSP. Let me be sure all of these are right before I get my trimmer back out, just to be sure that I only borked up one. Something isn't right here either, is it? Mm -mm. No, that looks about right, but that's a little big. So I'm gonna fix this up. Okay, I'm just gonna take the pass I had on tour today, and so, you know, I'm tired. Let's just go with I'm a little tired, okay? I'm a little tired. All right, we're gonna check these measurements out and be sure I am doing correctly. I'm looking for one and an eighth by one and three quarters. There's one and an eighth, one and three quarters. Okay, that is correct. 
So what does this prove? It proves even demonstrators that are old like I. And boy, I'm just gonna tell you, it never occurred to me I'd ever be one of the old demonstrators, but I am. I mean, I'm getting there. All right, so that is correct. And now I'm going to cut another piece, but not with that one. I shall use this one. I believe I will use this one. And we're going to go one and an eighth. One and an eighth. Because you know what I figured you really needed was some more cutting demonstrations. <laughs> okay, so that's one and an eighth by one and three quarters. I hope you guys got to do some fun networking with people. That was one of the cool place things about um, our events. They get a really nice Zoom um, platform together and they can break us out into, well, they call them cleverly breakout rooms. And, and we uh, can talk with other demonstrators about ideas and, and business tips and things like that. So that is quite handy. Uh, oh, honeybee, what am I, what are you agreeing with? Do I have a link to the sander? Um, I don't, I probably got that at a Hobby Lobby or a Joann's. I've had it since I got back into stamping when I was down in Florida for three months and I decided I was taking Stampin' Up, and this was before I got into Stampin' Up. So let's just say that Hobby Lobby, Michaels, and Joann's down at Eglin Air Force Base area miss me. Because <laughs> between them and Amazon, the hotel was like, uh, Miss Dethridge, you have another um, delivery from Amazon. Do you need the luggage cart? Oh, yes, I do. Okay, so we've got four of these little panels. And then we're gonna have one of this little panel, and with any luck, I've cut it correctly. I did. Whew. And then let's go ahead and make our inner liner thingy, Bobber, and then we'll go ahead and get the front decorated. Decorated. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start adhering these to the card base. And I'm just using liquid glue. There will be some dimensionals, do not worry. There will be some dimensionals. This looks more up than down than the other ones do. We will have some dimensionals on the front of the card. Worry not, worry not, my friends. All right, and then we've got a couple of these pieces. Aren't these just gorgeous? I just think they are the prettiest, it's the prettiest paper. I'm gonna miss this terribly. Hand penned is one of our prettiest papers ever. And that's, that's even knowing what I know is coming in the new catalog. Which, by the way, I, I may or may not have ordered with next day delivery, and so it may or may not be here. Actually, that's literally true. It may or may not be here on Monday, depending on whether UPS wants to bring it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Mary, that was cool that you got to see Amy. That was fun. We had people I did not know. A couple of them knew me, but I did not know them. So that was fun to, to meet some new people. Some new peoples. All righty, so there we go. So this is for the larger panels. We'll go ahead and adhere these as well. And I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put this one on the front. Why? I don't know. I have no idea. But it seems like the right thing to do. And so if you'll put this one on first, then you can use the top of it as kind of a where should I be line, you know, because you're kind of, although it's not very technical, I like to make sure that my mats are as straight across the top as I can get. So I'll go ahead and do the second one. Are y'all just sitting there going, God, I wish you had just pre-matted those, hello. Gosh, Mary. Now it is important to notice that this DSP does have an up and a down. So you see what I did there? I just folded it so I could get a better eyesight of those two mats and make sure that it's as lined up as I can get it. Now this one doesn't particularly, I don't really think this has an up and down, so I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna not worry about it. I have decided I'm officially not worrying about it. I'll just line up those mat tops and then we're gonna call it a day. We're gonna call it good, baby. Good, baby. Hey, baby. 
Well, we did some planting today. We planted 39 tomato plants. Actually, no, that's not true. We plant, yes, yes, 39 tomatoes. I haven't planted those sweethearts yet. And then I planted like <laughs> maybe way more than that of marigolds in all around the, the um, bases of the tomatoes so that they would keep out the pests. I had see, we saw a YouTube video that said dill is a good thing to plant by tomatoes because the hornworms would go to the dill and then you could see them easier. But then I was reading online again, different YouTube place, where a master gardener said, yeah, that's bunk because they don't eat dill. They eat tomato plant things. And so I went with my marigolds. I planted two entire flats of marigolds, and a lot of them came up doubles too, so I got really, really lucky. Okay, now I'm going to make our sentiment for the middle there. Did I open new glue? Yes, this is new glue, but it needed to be popped down a little bit. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this sentiment, and I'm going to stamp it. It's going to be upright on this little piece of basic white, and I am going to do it in misty moonlight. Remember my, my tip, always do a pre-stamp, and if you can line it up on a line, then you can tell if I am straight, it is straight, and it looks to be straight. So we're gonna be doing that. I know, a lot of the team did. We had a lot of people that went today. So that's kind of fun. Now the trick is not telling anybody what we saw because we're supposed to keep it a secret. Okay, so I'm just going to stamp right in the center there. And I'm holding it a beat like that to be sure I get a nice image. And I did. And then I'll take the little, the little um, flowers from Dahlia Days and I'm going to stamp a couple of times in Highland Heather. like this. Okay. Luck of this. Yep, mum's the word. Don't, just don't let dill or fennel go to seed or you'll have a whole farm. I saw that too, so it's the seed part, eh? Well, what we kind of decided was that we would put them in pots and kind of keep them away from just like one pot. Because to be quite honest, I don't do a lot of cooking with dill Really, truly, the only reason I planted it was because of what I read about the hornworms. So, uh, you know, the amount of dill I use in a year, I can buy a jar of it, a bottle of it at the grocery store, and it will last quite a long time. All right, so here's going to be our inside. And it's going to go right there in that one open spot. And then we're going to stamp our... Um, front. We'll get our front going. Okay, so there you go. You can see it's really, when you lay it flat, it's a five and a half by eight and a half piece with some holes and some cuts and some score lines. So we'll set that aside. And now I have used for this one, just so you'll know, I've used the middle, nope, the next to biggest of the dies and scalloped contours to cut a piece of basic white. And first off, I am going to um, stamp, where are you leaves? I'm gonna stamp this leaf in mint macaron all over it. All right, is that it? Is that it? Seed part, I literally laughed out loud. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I think I know, Angie. I think I know. See, I thought it might be like mint. I think mint runs. Um, so I was I was thinking it was like mint, but if it's the seeds, then that's different entirely. So I'm really just kind of stamping all over this in the mint macaron. What I love about this set is these these stamps really stamp nicely. Really stamp nicely. I'm trying to be a little random, but you know, there's really only so many ways a leaf can go. Like right there, I just got two leaves just exactly the same next to each other. Now, part of this is gonna be covered, but I'm not gonna spend a lot of brain cells trying to figure out where I don't need to stamp, so I'm just stamping all over it. All right, because you know, me and brain cells, 
you only have so many of them, and if you waste them on trivia, like, where should I not stamp when it's just as easy to just, you know, stamp, then, then you run out of brain cells too early. Too early in life. Like so. Mint macarons, so pretty. It's so pretty. Oh, so pretty. Hey, Carol, appreciate you joining. Okie dokie. Now, I did do a little die cutting because, you know, there's only so much that I can expect you to look at. I've got a couple of dahlias, one in Misty Moonlight, one in Highland Heather, and then I stamped a couple of the other leaves that are in the set in Mint Macaron and cut them out, and these are all with matching dies, okay? So I've got those ready to go, and now I'm going to stamp the very pretty. This is a beautiful little label, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stamp it on a piece of basic white in Smoky Slate. Thanks, Daryl. So Smoky Slate. I've done this one about three different ways in four different colors and finally decided that Smoky Slate was the right way to go. Okay, so that's a Smoky Slate. And then I have this um, image right here ready to go and that looks just about right to me. So I'm gonna stamp it in Misty Moonlight which has disappeared. No, it hasn't. Of course it hasn't, that's silly. That's right, I have to sing a little bit. I know that's why you come, because of my singing voice. Okay, so there we go. Oh, how much do you love a Stamparatus? The answer should be, we love it a lot, Mary. We all love it and we all want it. Okay, now I'm gonna take a couple of blends and I've got the light version of all of them except this one, which is what I wanted was the dark one, the light one. And then this should be light as well. And these are Daffodil Delight. So light, 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 Daffodil Delight, Mint Macaron and Highland Heather. And I'm just using these blends to color right over that um, smoky slate. Okay, so it just adds a little bit of color, and this happens to be the same colors that are in the hand pen DSP. Isn't that a wild and crazy coincidence? Who would have thunk that would ever happen? Now here's the only hard part about this, is finding where the dahlia ends and the leaves begin. So you can do one of two ways. You can start with the mint macaron and do your leaves. We'll try that one and see if I can do this without coloring a dahlia petal mint macaron. I, I'm not gonna say that I didn't do that a time or two, but I totally did. Okay, so I'm just coloring. And you know, you don't have to get real artistic with this unless it just makes you really happy. But the, um, the, re the shadow lines, the shading lines that Stampin' Up! and the designers put in for us is just right. So if you just take and let the, um, the smoky slate kind of shine through, you'll be able to see it with the light blends on top. And what'll happen is it looks like it's really disappearing, but as the blend dries, which is pretty quickly, but as it dries, you can really see the um, those lines again. And so that dahlia kind of comes back out. Now, I will tell you, it doesn't come back out very well when you do it in Misty Moonlight, which was one of my iterations. And I ended up not liking it and not using it. So there you go. Where I colored it with even just the light, with the light Misty Moonlight Stampin' Blend, I didn't like it. If you do one and you wanna try it, obviously it's your card, you can do that. And if you love it, use it, baby. It just didn't. It just didn't fry my french fries, so I, un I undiddleized it. Okay, I'm gonna cut this out right quick with my die that happens to match this, and I'll, uh, this will be wrong if I do it like that, so hang on just a second while I do that. And we'll be ready to put our card front together and then put it on the front of the card. And we'll be so close to being done that you could almost say we will be done, except we won't, we'll have to do an envelope. Now, just to be square, if I still had an envelope punch board, 
I probably would have just gone ahead and done this card in 5x7 because then I would have made an envelope probably out of some hand pinned paper using my envelope punch board. But I hate to share something with you that I can't let you get from me because that's just crazy. It's crazy. But if you have an envelope punch board, you can go to Susan's website and see the, the dimensional dimensions for a five by seven and you'll be ready to go. Okay, we have all of our card cuts carded and cutted and stuff. And so we're gonna go ahead and put this together. Now, I would not normally advocate putting your card together on your card, but in this particular case, you at least want it laying on it, okay? Because you wanna be sure that you're not doing something odd and weird with everything pushing past where it is when it's closed because you want it to be all within the base, the boundaries of the card when it's closed so it will go in that envelope that you worked so hard to get it to be the size of. Okay, okay. <clears throat> a true professional knows the wrong way, right way. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I gotta have a drink. The pollen, man, the pollen is just crazy right now. And it's making my throat tickle, and I'm very much afraid we're going to have an incident of the coughing variety. Okay, so here's how this card is going to go. We're going to have this like so, and see I want this within the bounds of the card base. And then we're going to have some dahlias, about like that. And then we're going to put on some leaves in a similar fashion to this right here. And we're going to have a little bit of blue ribbon from the 1 8 inch cotton ribbon. This is in Misty Moonlight, so it's kind of perfect. Just saying, throwing it out there. And I'm gonna go ahead and be very bold, and I'm going to adhere this to the card front right away. So everyone, just hold your breath so that we don't get crazy. So I'm gonna put glue on the inner part of this piece, and I'm gonna put glue right in here, like that. And that's about what I'm gonna do. And then I'm going to put it on here. And essentially what you're doing, guys, is you're centering it top to bottom and side to side. That's, that's really all you're doing. It's not anything more complicated than that right there. Okay, so we're gonna give that a little rub so that it stays straight. Hey, Robin. Do, 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 do. Okay, there we go. See? Nice. Now, sometimes this fold will get a little recalcitrant, and it'll come up like that, and you'll be like, oh, no, I've glued that to it. But no, you haven't. It's just gotten to be a little persnickety. Okay. Now, we'll take a little bit of our Stampin' Seal, and I'm going to put a little bit right here. I use that to run my piece of that cotton uh, ribbon that I was mentioning earlier. And you want it to go out a little ways because you got a lot to kind of get, you're gonna cover a lot of it and you really still wanna be able to see it. I mean, otherwise, what's the point, right? Alrighty, then we'll cut this right here. Oops, come here now. Did you see that thing? Just, jeez, I can fix that a little bit later if I need to. Okay, so now, we're gonna go ahead and start, and I am going to use some dimensionales. And these are those Italian dimensionals, so you're gonna to wanna to be sure to get those. I'm just gonna put them on the card front like this. Now I'm gonna have, everything is gonna be dimensionalized, so I should be good to go kind of a long ways out, but I'll go ahead and just keep kind of double checking that everything is where I want it to be. There we go, so I can put some more dimensionals here. And you should only need single level dimensionals, so you don't have to do a double stack. Keep that kind of down there like that, and like that. All right, so then we'll go ahead and put these on. Now, obviously I'm rolling with this pretty fast because I've already done one. Okay, I did three, I didn't decorate three, I only did three card bases. But you want to take your time and figure out what the ideal layout is, right? Okay, so now I'm going to put another dimensional here to support my Highland Heather. 
like that. And there we go. Now look, see, I want this to be a little more up that way. There we go. The nice thing about the seal is, is it lets you wiggle it a little bit. All right, take off these lids like so. And there we go. So there's that. Oh, <laughs> nicely done, Mary. Wow. I couldn't do that again if I aimed for it. It's true. I could not. All right. And then we'll go ahead and put this on like so. Bring it out like right about there. And let me get that straight so that that's sort of straight. Okay, so there we go. And I'm going to go ahead and slide a dimensional right under there to give it a little support. The Italian ones are not superior, but they're much smoother. It's kind of like gelato versus ice cream. It's it's really the same kind of a concept. So, you know, it just depends on what you like. What I would like right now is to be able to see my, there they are, my tweezers had escaped. I do not know why when I do these videos, all of a sudden I try to have this silly Italian accent because I am so not Italian. I do like gelato though and tiramisu, so does that count? I'm pretty sure it does. I saw a really good dessert today. It's called a s'mores cone, and you take an ice cream cone, like a sugar cone, and you and you put some peanut butter around the edge of the, on the inside, or I guess you could use Nutella if you were crazy, and then you put mini marshmallows and chocolate chips inside of it, and then you wrap it up tight in foil and and bake it for like 10 minutes at a 350 oven or on the grill or at a fireplace or something like that. And then you open it up and you have like a s'more in a cone. I'm just, it looked pretty stinking good. I'm just throwing that out there. I do like s'mores. My friend and I a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, when we were counselors at a Girl Scout camp in Colorado, yes, we were. It's true, we were. Uh, <laughs> we would have all-nighters where we would try to stay awake. That got less doable as we got older, where we'd try to stay awake to watch movies, usually Star Trek, because we were really cool like that. And <laughs> we would try to make some more. And at one point, we didn't have a fire or a fireplace even in the in the cabin. And so we were cooking them over the <laughs> over the gas range. That was how desperate we were for a s'more. All right, I'm going to slide this little guy. I love these little these little leaf guys. I'm going to slide him under here like that. And then I'm going to put this other one that's equally cute, possibly cuter. And now he's going to go on the top, right? Oops, I should probably put the stem in. There we go. Just like that. Okay, so there's our front, and then we're going to add some genial gems in mint macaron to our sentimente, and one on the inside as well. I don't think I've forgotten anything. I could have. Maybe. We don't know. All right, we'll put a little one there, and then a little one, and a big one. And that is not, aren't those pretty? I love those. And then I'm going to open this up and put a little one on the inside too. Right there, like that. And there you have a very easy fun fold. Really, the fun fold part itself is so easy. And now you know how to make the dimensions and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and decorate our envelope and we'll be done, ske. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going way long. Well, I blame the fact that I cut the cardstock wrong. It shouldn't take this long at all. So I've got my basic white envelope, and I am going to stamp some Highland Heather flowers right here. Thank you, Karen. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Appreciate you. It's all the DSP, baby. Hi, that hand penned is gorgeous. All right two little stamps worth of flowers. And then we'll put some more of the hand pen on the envelope flap and they'll be done. -ske. Thank you, Denise. Thanks, Kathy. Appreciate you guys. Alrighty, here we go. Now, this one does have an up and a down, okay? So, you know, unless you're just being a rebel, a rogue, and a rue, 
you want to put that right side up on that flap. Not wrong side down, okay? Don't do that. Don't do wrong side down. Aw, thanks, Rosie. Appreciate that. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna miss this paper so much. So much, but we got beautiful paper coming, people. Beautiful papers coming. All righty, there we go. A fun fold whose name I do not know, but it stands up perfectly. Well, unless you put it on an uneven thing like that, it stands up for a display. You've got here. Now, one thing about it, there's not a whole lot of room to write a message, right? True statement. If you wanted to, and you were desperate to write a statement, make another mat this size and a piece of basic white this size, put it right here, and you can write a, a, a message this way. Or, you know what, just sign it and let the words speak for themselves and send it with a kiss. All right, guys, I appreciate you spending part of your evening with me. I hope you have a great rest of the weekend, and I will see you next Thursday. Now, just fair warning, if uh, US, UPS does their thing on Monday, I'll probably have a pop-up unveiling of the new goodies, and um, they're going to be fun, and there's a lot of it. So be watching. Make sure you have subscribed. I'll be on YouTube doing it, not Facebook. I'll do it on YouTube. So you'll be wanting to watch to see if I go live, and I hope you'll be able to join me and see some new goodies. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good one. Bye.